Welcome back to Journey of a Ballaholic, the best talk show for basketball addicts. I'm your host, General Hannibal X. Now, in this journey, we're going to be discussing the potential DeMarcus Cousins being traded to the Toronto Raptors. Listen, and could that possibly shake up the entire Easter Conference? You got to make sure you stick around to the end. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm an absolute ballaholic, totally addicted to basketball. But just like everybody, I've got my own opinions. So if you like opinions that are backed by facts, go ahead and hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel. But also, be sure to hit that bell notification and turn it on to all notifications. That way you'll be updated whenever I drop a new video. Are you ready? Okay, so by now you've heard the news. DeMarcus Cousins and the Houston Rockets they're going to be parting ways. Now, this right here, I don't know about you, but it totally shocked me. Came out of left field. What was so crazy was that the Houston Rockets had just guaranteed DeMarcus Cousins' contract. It was like $2.3 million that they guaranteed him. And now he's about to hit the road and find a new organization to play with. So what's the reason? Well, number one, the Rockets want to go younger. They want to go smaller. The management has changed. Daryl Morey is out. James Harden's out. Mike D'Antoni's out. But the ownership has remained, and the ownership seems that they want to stay and try small ball yet again. Christian Wood has been hurt, so now DeMarcus Cousins filled into that starting position, and he's been playing well, actually. I can't give him, you know, I can't throw any shade. DeMarcus Cousins has been playing very well in the absence of Christian Wood. But now Wood's going to be coming back soon, and now they want to move on for DeMarcus Cousins. So that leaves the question, are the Rockets going to just buy DeMarcus Cousins out, or are they going to guarantee that contract so that they can trade him and get potentially an asset back in return or you know just some you know pennies on the dollar instead of just letting him walk and if they do trade him where's the best destination well i'm going to talk about a couple of um, options today number one you've got teams like the lakers he was with the lakers last year he definitely really played with them even he got hurt you know during the preseason but that's a, a legitimate option that teams have to consider because the lakers are in, not necessarily in need of a big man, but there's a lot of rumors that the Lakers are interested in bringing DeMarcus Cousins back to LA, where, like I say, he was with the team last year, and unfortunately, because of his injury, he wasn't able to actually play with them to win a championship, but he did still get a ring. So, the LA's a legitimate option. You got you can't take that off the table. They got Marcus Saul over there, they've got a Montrose Harrell, but adding a third big man, it definitely would hurt, especially especially with Anthony Davis being out for possibly another three to four weeks. So you got to keep your eyes on the Lakers. Then you got teams like the Golden State Warriors, another spot that he's been with where DeMarcus Cousins was with that Golden State Warriors team, even though they didn't win a championship because of all the other injuries that happened to that team. He was on a team that went to the NBA Finals in 2019 that lost to the Toronto Raptors. Speaking of the Raptors, that's the team we want to discuss today because the Toronto Raptors, they are in an interesting situation. Now, for those who've been following this channel, I told you from the beginning of the season, I did not like the Toronto Raptors front court. Aaron Baines, Alex Lynn were the new guys that they brought in. Alex Lynn has shipped him up out of there, but Aaron Baines has been there. Now, recently we've seen they decided to bring Aaron Baines off the bench because he's just not getting it done. Chris Boucher is the only big man on this team that has a plus, uh, plus minus uh, rating. This in the, the positive. It's only Chris Boucher. When Aaron Baines or Alex Lynn was on the court, they they were terrible. Like let's just call it what it is. They were terrible. So they're going with a smaller lineup. But let's be honest, you're not going to win playing small ball. Like Houston saw that last year. It seems like they're going to have to realize it again this year. But at the end of the day, Toronto when they won the championship, they had size. They had skilled players. Marcus Saul, Serge Ibaka. These guys were able to man the paint. They were able to score. They were able to facilitate. They were multifaceted. And now, it potentially, we could see DeMarcus Cousins coming to the, the, um, the Raptors and doing exactly what Marcus Saul did. Now, granted, he's not the defender that Marcus Saul was or is still to this day. But offensively, he's going to give some versatility to this Raptors team. And I think they actually need, man. Now, prior to the season, I had the Raptors being the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. Everybody knows this. But let's keep it real. The Raptors started off looking like they weren't even going to make the playoffs. So I got to give them a lot of credit for just getting back to this point. Where right now, currently, they're in the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. And it's not a you know far out imagination or possibility that they could even rise up to the fourth spot. Could they catch the third spot where you got Milwaukee sitting there? Maybe, maybe not. The Bucs are not playing amazing basketball. This isn't last year's Milwaukee team. Their defense has just not been where it needs to be. 
the Raptors have a legitimate chance here, man. Now, I want to I want to kind of temper expectations. Let's say the Raptors do trade for DeMarcus Cousins. What, what would they have to give up? You don't have to give up anything major, and that's the biggest bonus of this yet. If you're going for somebody like a Andre Drummond, right? Based on his contract, you got to give up a lot of pieces. We've done a video talking about Andre Drummond possibly going to the Raptors, to find, trying to feel that need at center, but how they may have to give up some of their either this one of their stars and or a combination of young players. Well, I didn't necessarily like either one of those options. Not because I didn't like drumming, because I didn't like how much they would have to give up. DeMarcus Cousins, you don't have to do that. You don't have to worry about giving up a lot. You don't have to worry about a Van Fleet or Siakam or OG, uh, uh, OG Ananobi or a Boucher. You don't have to worry about giving up any of them. The, at most, at most, you're talking about a, 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 um, a young guy like a, a, a Matt Thomas, right? Maybe Terrence Davis. Maybe a Bembry, you know, maybe somebody on that lower level, a bench player is what you, at, at best you're giving up, maybe a second round pick. But if they're going to just let him walk, now he's got the option to choose where he wants to go. See, this is why I think Toronto should be aggressive here. If you give DeMarcus Cousins the, uh, the, the time and the option to choose his destination, what's the chances he's going to choose Toronto? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. But as we saw with Kawhi Leonard, when you don't give him that option to choose and you bring him in, he's going to assimilate. These are professionals. They're going to, you know, play to the best of their ability. And DeMarcus Cousins will be on a playoff team, and he will be on a team that could potentially be a contender in the Eastern Conference. Right now, as the Raptors are, they're not a contender. You've got to have a better front court. DeMarcus Cousins is not the star he used to be. He's not Boogie Cousins that we used to be back in the day. But he's still skilled. He can still get on that box and go to work. He can, uh, on the glass, he can clean up. He can pass. He can shoot, right? So DeMarcus Cousins has a, a, a diverse offensive game. Defensively, we know he's, you know, he's a little lumbering, you know, definitely not as athletic as he used to be, and he never was a super athletic big man, right? But the defenders that they have around him, I think can compensate for that. I think he can compensate for that. But having that big body, somebody to bang with a Joel Embiid, Right? Somebody to be able to get down there and bang with the DeAndre Jordan from the from the Nets. Somebody to be able to, to bang with the Brooke Lopez from the from the Bucks. I, I, I kind of like DeMarcus Cousins down there. Because you got Chris Boucher, who's their rim protector, right? So he could play beside him. Siakam could play beside Cousins. So you got these other versatile defensive forwards. I like it, man. I like it. I think if if the Raptors are able to make this trade, and want to go back to that point I was, I was making. The reason I don't think the Raptors should wait for him to become a free agent and that they should actually give up, and maybe whether it's a second round pick or whether it's one of those young players, is because you don't want him to hit that open market. Because chances are he's going to go to a southern, uh, sunny California uh, city, right? Whether that be the Lakers, whether that be the Golden State Warriors, or maybe he decides he wants to go to the Miami Heat, or maybe he wants to go to another uh, a location. Now, I understand that Toronto's in Tampa, right? They're in Tampa, Florida. So, you know, we got the sunny, Florida weather down there. So I get that. But if he does like it there, what's the chances of him staying there? Because he knows Toronto's eventually going back to cold Toronto, Canada, right? So I don't necessarily know if they want to gamble on that. Make the trade. Make the trade. The East is has three teams, in my opinion. The Nets, the, the Bucks, and the, the Sixers that are kind of above everybody else, right? I think this is the year to go for it. To me, like I said, I still think that the, the Sixers and the Nets are even above the, the, the Milwaukee Bucks. But I think if the Raptors who have been surging recently, right? The Raptors have been playing amazing basketball. They get Kyle Lowry back in this thing. You bring in a DeMarcus Cousins. I think this Toronto Raptors team could be a sneaky pick. Remember who, who made it to, to the finals last year? It was the Miami Heat. They were not a top three seed. They were, what, the fifth seed in the East, and they shocked everybody with their depth. They shocked everybody with their versatility. Could Toronto be this year's Miami Heat? I don't know, man. Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think the Raptors should trade for DeMarcus Cousins, or do you think they should wait and try to sign him as a free agent? Either way, let me know in the comment section below. And if you don't think... Cousins is going to land with the Raptors. Let me know where you think the best destination would be for DeMarcus Cousins, who's still trying to revitalize his career, for him to end up. What's the best spot for him to end up to be able to get 
the best chance of trying to win a championship? Let me know. Listen, I appreciate you for watching this video. Until next time, make sure that you stay, stay safe in the streets. If you missed any of my previous videos, go ahead and click the box right here on the screen. Be sure that you subscribe as well. General Hannibal X, I'm out. Peace.